Okay, in our video series on emergency medicine and toxicology lectures, in this video, we'll be talking about paracetamol poisoning, commonly seen as Panadol poisoning. We'll discuss it, what is its presentation and how do you treat it in emergency department step by step. First of all, paracetamol is a commonly used antipyretic analgesic agent easily available in the markets. Its overdose levels are reached when a person consumes greater than 150 mg per kg of paracetamol. Now, if we apply this formula on an example, if a person has 70 kg weight, then that person has to consume 10 grams of paracetamol to reach the toxic levels. And 10 grams of paracetamol are equal to 20 tablets of commonly available Panadol formulations that are available in the market. And each tablet is of 500 mg. If a person take 20 tablet of this 500 mg Panadol, that equals up to 10 gram. And that is the toxic dose for a 70 kg man. Now coming to the mechanism of action by which paracetamol overdose damages the body. Remember paracetamol if taken in overdose damages the liver. In liver, we have a compound called as glutathione that glutathione has a protective effect on liver. What paracetamol overdose does that paracetamol overdose produces a compound called as NAPQ1. That compound destroys the glutathione and reduces the glutathione levels in the liver. When the glutathione levels are lowered down, when the glutathione is lost, the protective effect of liver is lost. So that's how hepatic necrosis, hepatic damage takes place. That is how paracetamol overdose damages liver. Presentation of a patient with paracetamol overdose would be dependent on the time of ingestion. Within few hours, the first place where paracetamol would reach would be the stomach and gastric irritation would result in nausea and vomiting within few hours. In 12 to 14 hours, liver damage will ensue. Liver damage will start taking place and patient will feel tenderness. Patient will have tenderness in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, tenderness over the liver. On second or fourth day, patient might develop jaundice due to damage of liver. Between third and fifth day, patient will start developing hepatic encephalopathy due to damage of liver and accumulation of toxic substances. Liver failure will present with bleeding because liver produces clotting factors and those clotting factors are lost. Now, this will result in bleeding. Metabolic acidosis due to hyperventilation due to stimulation of respiratory drive by paracetamol. Coming to the investigations of paracetamol overdose. In the investigations of paracetamol overdose, the most important investigation is the paracetamol levels to confirm the diagnosis of paracetamol poisoning. Then, if someone asks you about the most sensitive indicator of liver damage in paracetamol poisoning, it's prothrombin time. Prothrombin time is the most sensitive indicator of liver damage and it is seen after 24 hours. LFTs and bilirubin levels rise, but they rise slowly and they peak around third and fifth day. So the first thing that would change would be the prothrombin time, not the LFTs or bilirubin. So look for elevated prothrombin time that would indicate the liver necrosis. Coming to the treatment of paracetamol overdose. In the treatment of paracetamol overdose, N-acetylcysteine is given. N-acetylcysteine is a specific antidote for paracetamol poisoning and it must be given within 8 hours of ingestion of paracetamol. And how do you give N-acetylcysteine? You give N-acetylcysteine in 5% dextrose with an initial dose of 150 mg per kg in 200 ml of glucose over 1 hour. Then you give another dose of 50 mg per kg in 500 ml of glucose over the next four hours. And then you give 100 mg per kg in one liter of glucose over 16 hours. So that is how you give an acetylcysteine. Now there are certain side effects associated with an acetylcysteine and they are commonly seen when the paracetamol levels in the blood are low. In some cases, after starting N-acetylcysteine infusion, patient might develop erythema, urticaria around the infusion site, generalized rashes, itching, angioedema, and bronchospasm. 
This is an anaphylactic reaction. In such case, you need to stop the infusion and give antihistamine 10 mg IV chlorpheniramine over one minute. I have talked about anaphylactic reaction management in detail in my video on anaphylactic reaction emergency treatment. The link of that video is in the description below. Then you slowly restart the infusion when the patient's symptoms have got better. Now coming to the paracetamol overdose in children or pediatric group, usually these patients have lower risk of hepatotoxicity because they have ingested less than 75 mg per kg of paracetamol, which is a non-toxic dose. So no investigations or treatment is required. And if in any case treatment with N-acetylcysteine is required, doses are same as adults but with smaller fluid volumes. And in some cases of paracetamol, the liver damage is to such an extent that liver transplant is mandatory. These patients are perfect candidates for liver transplant if the hepatic necrosis is to an extent that it meets the criteria. If the arterial pH is less than 7.3, even after resuscitation, if the PT prothrombin time is greater than 100 seconds, if the INR is greater than 6.7, or the creatinine is greater than 300 millimole per liter in patient with grade 3 and grade 4 encephalopathy. If the patient meets this criteria, that patient must go through a liver transplant because these things show liver failure, liver shutdown. In summary, we talked about the dose of paracetamol that is toxic. We talked about how paracetamol causes decreased glutathione level and hepatic necrosis. We talked about symptoms according to the time. We talked about investigations in which PT is the most sensitive indicator of liver damage and management of the side effects of N-acetylcysteine in children, lower risk of hepatotoxicity. And we discussed the criteria for liver transplantation. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on toxicology lectures and emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.